Welcome to this week's Endurance for Everyone podcast. is for entertainment purposes only. Though the hosts of this show are certified Ironman coaches, their attempts at long course triathlons and endurance events should not be taken as an endorsement for you to do something stupid too. You should make your own bad decisions, then podcast about it. Now, let's start the show. Endurance is for everyone, and this is episode 101 of the Endurance for Everyone podcast for December 18th, 2017. I am your host, John Harris, and I am in Tampa, Florida, and with me as always from the frozen tundra of Pennsylvania is my co-host, Rob Bozovich. Hey, John. How you doing down there where it's warm and you don't you know, need to worry about dying just walking outside? It was 82 degrees today. 82 degrees. You know what? It was much warmer today. When I say much warmer, I think we hit 44. But the other day, you know, I remember it was, I was heading to spin class on last Friday, and I sent you the thing, and it was eight degrees when I was leaving. And yeah. you would, I sent you the photo of my um, screenshot from, you know, the uh, Apple whatever weather app, and you're like, hey, look, it's 14. I'm like, 14, look again. That was going to be like the high at noon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Well, I was trying to, like, give you, you know, some – you know, <laughs> leeway there. Uh, that's just crazy cold to me. I can't even imagine it. Um, but I have to say, you go, you get out there and run in it anyway, don't you? So does Megan. We always see her all snowed up and iced up out there running. But yeah, you guys, you guys, yeah, you guys are made of different stuff. I'm telling you. But then again, you know, you come down here and run in 101 degrees, and we get you. So it's yes, it's all relative, right? That's it. Yeah. That's it. We all have the things that are that come easy to us. We all have the things we find difficult. So yeah. So I want to say, uh, starting off, I want to say uh, congrats to Megan on a sync up. She got her personal best in that race over the weekend. Oh, I, did. I missed that. Congratulations. Missed yeah, yeah. She got a personal best. So nice job, man. And uh, I also got something in the mail uh, yesterday. I think you got it. Do you get um, uh, Vinny's Pure Coffee Club? I do. Yes. Yeah, you talked about that, right? I did a couple I got, episodes ago. I got yeah, I got uh, the athletic bean yesterday. Yep. And I tried it today That's good. for the first time. It is delicious. And this is not yeah, a I, plug in any way for for his stuff. You know, we're not in any way associated with with Vinny and his stuff, but um, well worth it. it. Was cheap too. It was like what eight bucks for twelve ounce or like a small bag. That's not much. Yeah. So. It, when I say it's variable pricing, and I don't know his price points, um, there's the, there's a small bag and a big bag, and I don't know if you had a discount if you based on frequency and or based on um, you know which what you order. So I ordered my initial order. Maybe I should change it now because I actually just got my renewal because it'll be coming for the second month now. I ordered the athletic blend and I ordered the house blend. <laughs> I did not order the – I think the third one's a honey something. I did not try the honey. I can't speak for it. But the, out of the athletic and the house, I, I like the house. Uh, it, was, it was actually my favorite. The athletic blend is really good. And now I'm not – it sounds funny to say a big coffee drinker, although I drink it every single day. Um, as in like I've never been a someone who can appreciate the undertones and like, oh, this is actually a really good cup. you know. Um, to me, it's like, oh, whatever because I was always putting it – years ago flavored creamers and whatnot and then when i went nsng it was just heavy whipping cream and coffee and and or decaf was just a way to get the cream to me but since i've been doing the intermittent fasting um you know uh, for the last you know few weeks here since thanksgiving that's where i can really appreciate it because you know i can drink that stuff you know, black and it actually, it tastes really good. There's no bitterness, no, no burn, no acidity to it. And it, and that's where I really, I just really like it. Yeah. I think you get the, uh, I get the, you, you get a kind of a discount if you get on the, uh, the, the monthly renewal, we renewal plan. I just took it because mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure I liked it. So I just got one bag. Um, I figure eight bucks is worth it either, even if I didn't like it, but I like most coffee, but I, and I like my coffee strong. So mm-hmm. when I was reading it, it seemed like that would have been the stronger one to go with. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's the one I got. And I really like it. It's really, really tasty. And uh, so if you guys are interested in, you know, go to uh, 
I think you can go to VinnyTortorich.com and, and, and check it out. I, I want to say the actual website is Pure Vitamin Club or PureCoffeeClub.com. But I said, yeah, Pure uh, Coffee Club, I believe, is it. Yeah, but I noticed on my uh, I noticed on my receipt it said Pure Vitamin Club <laughs> on the outside of the box. Uh, so I it think might have, but then again, I, I think they run it through their parent corporation. I right. think everything is is a you know PVC or PVC family or whatever, you yeah, know, something like that. Even yeah. that's even that's interesting to me because remember back in the day when they had like they sold nothing, and now yeah. they they have all these products, which is great. Um, what I do like about it is that you know even though he has gone into selling things and that irritated, I know some people out there. Um, it's very affordable. It's not like he's gouging anybody. You know, no, even both bags of coffee were like fifteen bucks or whatever. Well, you know, I, 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 for paid, me. I, I paid the. I bought the smaller bag. Like I said, it was like eight bucks. Um, that's cheap for coffee, you know. So, especially good coffee, good quality coffee. And I think the Vitamin Club is what ten bucks for vitamins. Is that something like that? It sounds correct, but once again, then I've tried his stuff, and or when I say I know I liked it, I'm up to the when I you know draw me right in. I'm up on all three of his stuff, so I actually yeah. take the B12, the magnesium, and the vitamin, which is obviously more expensive than just the um, uh, than the one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you're kind of like me in that way. If I had more funds, you know, I would do that too. But I, I like trying things. Um, yeah. As, as long as it fits into my Zone, you know, I'm not going to go out there and try something um, ridiculous. Say, um, I will yeah. say, I got for uh, for Christmas like an early Christmas present. I got an instant pot. Do you know what these things are? Okay. Yeah, we we have one. Yes. Oh my God, this thing is outstanding. <laughs> I have like, I've made so much stuff just in the few days I've had it. I've made black bean chili and all this stuff just to see if I could do it. It is, it's yeah. amazing. I love it. I, and that's a, a plug it, plug for Instant Pot. Maybe we can get that as a sponsor. Yeah. But uh, For anyone who doesn't know what it is, it's like a crock pot. And it's actually, you can use the same recipes, but it's a pressure cooker. It, yeah. The one we have actually has a, has, a, has a slow cook or basically the fast cook setting. And, you know, so it can be used like a crock pot as well. But you can throw the same stuff in and it's done, I think, in like an hour versus eight hours. Yeah, and uh, I think you you have the same one I have because I have the same I have all that too. The uh, it can be a slow yeah. cooker, you saute in it, uh, any everything in it. So um, I even uh, I even steamed eggs last night, <laughs> or you know hard boiled eggs, but you steam them instead. Um, mm-hmm. I will say if you try it's that. It's funny Rob, you say that because I was at, I have not that was on my list to do in the next few days. All right, if you try was it, this, what is the hard boil some eggs in there? So. All right, if you try it, uh, it tells you to do five minutes. Don't do five minutes. Yeah. It comes out soft boiled. Uh, okay. Go go like seven or eight. Okay. That, that's just just my just my advice to you because I did it five minutes and they were good for soft boiled eggs. They were almost perfect, but you were yeah. hard boiled. So yes. I needed a couple more minutes in there. Um, so um, oh, it, well, I'm going to jump back in here. Pure Coffee Club, and and maybe I just underestimate everything. I'm looking at my receipt. Not that anyone else really care. Uh, I did the subscription, um, the Athletic Blend, 12 ounce size, fourteen dollars and forty seven cents. The House Blend is uh, for is fifteen dollars forty seven cents for a total of twenty nine dollars ninety four cents, five dollars shipping. So less than thirty five bucks, which some people are going to say, holy hell, that simp- that might seem like a lot for coffee. Um, but like I said, that's that's been a month's worth of coffee, you know, for right. the, the wife and I. And the thing is, so. and, th- and this kind of goes into something we probably won't get into this show, but again, you're paying for a high quality coffee. So you're, yeah. I mean, we, we were, one of our things was going to be possibly name branding, you know, things like that. You know, this is not Folgers coffee, you know, no. nothing wrong with Folgers coffee. Folgers coffee is fine. Uh, but if but you're you're talking about getting a high quality coffee like um, Death Wish coffee and 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 this stuff and even some of Starbucks's brand which is not always the best stuff either but they have good stuff too. Um, you're going to pay more for it and um, it, it yeah. comes down to what taste and ability to pay for it. You know and so if you drink coffee every day, I mean you you take it down to how much does it cost per cup. And you're buying, you're paying three dollars, four dollars, five dollars at Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts for something you can have for a dollar a cup. 
you know, and it made better coffee, then, you know, it just makes more financial sense. It's because you're paying for it all at once. It kind of hits you different, right? Yeah. You know, so. but that being said, that's, that's roughly 50 cents a day, because figuring a dollar a day. And like I said, my wife and I have it, you know yeah. what I mean? So I mean, that's nothing, right? But if you're paying, it's kind of like how they get you on the apps, right? If you pay 99 cents, you get these you know, these special things. So you're not thinking about it. And before the end of the year, you spent $500 for this $2 app. Yeah. (laughs) You know, that's how they get you because you're not thinking about it in the long run. You know, Um, you're paying, you know, if you're paying 50 cents a day, you're not thinking about it or, or a dollar a day or $2 a day for whatever. You're not thinking about it in the long run, but if you pay, have to pay it all at once, it makes you think about it a little bit more. So it comes out cheaper, right? Sales 101. Sales 101. Uh, uh, so uh, I did want to talk about, uh, before we get to really get in the show, um, started looking at, thinking about, uh, I know I've mentioned online a couple of times that we're trying to grow the show and um, we're trying to get to a point that maybe we can attract some sponsors of some kind as long as they fit within our belief system, of course. And, yep. um so I started looking at it. I started wondering, it's like, when I started reading about it more, I said, well, it's all based on hits, on listens, you know, not on downloads, but on listens. You know, where do we stand as a show? And even though we've been out 15 months in this in this incarnation, so August 2016 was our first show, um, that statistics show that 90% of the podcasts get less than 100 listeners. So that's... And really, we were thinking that we're maybe around 300. We are mm-hmm. we are getting we are averaging right now about 3,000 listens per month, which is much higher than what we thought it was. So, for, for the record, much higher than you thought it was. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, you know, okay. Like I said, I, you know, I I, I I could say that I know I listen to it and you listen to it. And my mom says she listens to it. Hi, mom. So I know we can go for three. You know, but uh, right. yeah, I had no idea where we were. Three, just under three thousand is two thousand nine hundred and eighty something uh, per month. That's averaging. Uh, to let you, that's like I said, that's averaging. Last month in November, we had almost forty thousand in one month. Listens, so, listens in one month. So from August sixteenth, so that's from August two thousand sixteen through November of two thousand seventeen, we've increased five hundred and ninety eight percent. Or that's oh, couldn't, a, get, couldn't hit the 600 mark, John. <laughs> I know. So that's an average of a 16% growth each month that we're getting new. So the, either that's the, the audience is growing, where uh, you get into that that level where people are dropping off and new people are coming on. Um, so we're actually doing very well as a show, I think, in the long run. Um, we feel gonna, that, John. That's me patting you on the back. Well, it's it's everybody, right? <laughs> it's not just me. You know, I think you brought in quite a few people yourself. Uh, if we manage to, um, I, I, you know, this gets into my job. So, I, you know, the stuff I like to do is with statistics and stuff like this. So um, I always look at like the states, you know, and uh, for a long time, Pennsylvania was like the the number one state for whatever reason. It was probably Andrew, right? <laughs> um, yeah. And then it was Texas. And then in Florida was always like the fifth state. And it's my state, you know. Uh, but in the last three months, Florida is actually the number one state now. So it's kind of changing. The The listener was Florida, Texas. Pennsylvania has dropped to number five. California is there now. Washington State is number four for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Thank you, um, so, Washington listeners. Thank you, Washington State. Yeah. So um, so it's interesting when it gets into that kind of stuff. So, so we are we are starting a new century. This is episode 101. Huh. Does it does it feel like we're renewed here, Rob? It does. It, it feels like the dawn of a new century, John. Well, you know what? What always happens at the end of a year, as you enter in a new year, is that you start, and I think it's just innate in all of us, is that we start wondering, like, where we're going, if we need to change, <laughs> things like that for the new year. Um, have you, have, has any of that inner started entering your head? Me? Yeah, you, John. No, the guy behind. I'm you. the pinnacle. Of, I'm the pinnacle of perfection here. You know, I got Are a you? joke right there about. I'm not going to say it on air. Anyways, I. Uh, I'm the pinnacle of perfection, John. I don't think I need to change anything. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Well, you know, just you know, and, it, and it's scary a little bit because uh, what I want to start talking about first is kind of something that Pete and Gretchen talked about on their show. And it's scary All right. how much we do that. <laughs> It's like they'll talk about something that we just talked about, and now we'll talk about something that they may have just mentioned at some point. Yep. It's, it's kind of scary. There is no planning behind that. We're just I think we're just on the same wavelength at some point. Um, yep. Obviously, their show, it's a good show, and obviously their show is more lifestyle than ours is. You know, mm-hmm. I, w- I would say. Would you agree with that? Um, I'd agree, and especially because yeah. it's, it's the husband and wife, and they're you know we're yeah. uh, I have I have we're no, not, and we live an op, you know uh, right. thousands of miles apart as well. So right, I have no interest and in none in the real housewives of anywhere. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just putting that out there. Um, I, if they all went off the air tomorrow, I'd be a very happy man. Um, but. Um, what something John, that, that sounds so hostile see not, i don't watch them. i don't care my wife watches them i'm just saying that you know like it doesn't i just don't like how they get all that stardom over nothing i don't know exactly. that, that's i guess it's, it's un- me although if it all went off the air tomorrow i wouldn't notice because i don't watch them now right what are they famous for it's like the kardashians what are they famous for you know what do they do what do they provide to this world <laughs> you know they and they got all this money how do they get this money but um but but regardless you know it's like it you know people watching is what keeps this bs on the air <laughs> so as as i sit here and watch uh, as i sit here and watch iron chef you know <laughs> so yeah everybody has their their little things you know everybody has their guilty pleasures right so before yes, I get it, for before i get into it what's your guilty pleasure for the holidays what's a guilty pleasure that you have to watch me? Yeah. You that know, came out, it came out of the blue, right? <laughs> that did. Well, so oh, I don't. So there's, I guess, there's stuff in our recorder that we do watch. I should say, you know what I mean? There's like, we just going through it Big Bang, Modern Family, Life in Pieces. Like, we, we gravitate, gravitate towards comedies and all stuff that's when shows, I say, though. isn't. The stuff that's not time relevant, I can watch them now or I can watch them. Like right now, we're actually just watching some of them. They're like the Halloween shows. We're so far behind, okay? <laughs> but we also then binge things. As in you, and you heard me joke the other week or a month ago. We were watching, um, you know, Sopranos. It was my wife's first time seeing it. You know, just prior to that was Breaking Bad. I know. And then we just watched um, – I just watched, I should say, Sons of Anarchy, and right now the new one we've gotten into is The Ranch, which is on, uh, yeah, you know, man. Netflix original. So, so just, you know, and then got that, fired from that show. Who got you just? Uh, just yeah, D- Danny Mas- Masterson, Masterson. Yeah, 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 from the big from the '70s show. Yeah, for the. Uh... There, well, him and Ashton Kutcher both on there, and they're both from that '70s show. But anyways, yeah. So uh, yeah, I guess he's you know there he's seeing the door, but uh, you know anyway, I think it's it's. Good show, but anyway, like I said, my my tastes are varied. But there's nothing that I have to like drop and watch. You also go through my recorder. You know, I have chasing classic cars, graveyard cars, and they're both classic car type of shows. Um, You know, at one point I had every episode of that fit to fat to fit. So I go through swings, and it's kind of whatever I can binge a lot of. There's very few things that I I don't watch anything live, and I very few things I watch that are current. Okay, well, I was, okay. So I was talking about any Christmas show that is a guilty pleasure for you. Like I know a oh, lot you're of people. Christmas. Yeah, I'm I, sorry. I know a lot. I know a lot of people love the Hallmark Channel movies. Nancy, okay, Nancy. Um, but so that's a thing for them, you know. That and they're like they're they're so ridiculous movies, but they're they kind of draw you in. To be honest with you, I, mean, I sat there and watched them one night too. Um, but sometimes there's like this uh, show that comes around every year. Now, when I was growing up, before this is before the time of cable, every Christmas was marked by two movies. It's a Wonderful Life would come on like at the very <laughs> right after Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving weekend, The Wizard of Oz was on. So that was like a yearly ritual. There was a movie on the other day that I had not seen in years that I watched every year without fail. And you're probably too young to even know what it is, but it's called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. 
I've seen it. The, okay. And I, been, when I say I must have seen it at age seven or younger, I don't right. really remember it. But it's something about an old car and it goes into a barn and it's magic and it flies. <laughs> I, I think that's it's not that, that's that. about all I remember. The the interesting thing about Chitty Chitty Bang, not to go into wax poetic about Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, is Dick Van Dyke is the main character. Um, Benny Hill is in it as the toy maker. Uh and it's, it's a musical, so, you know, it's a Dick Van Dyke 60s movie. Um, the writer of the book, it was a book before it was a movie, was Ian Fleming, the same guy who wrote James Bond. Huh. So it's it's got that little, it's a comedy, but it's got that little uh, spy to it. You know, there's little spies in it and stuff like that. So it's an interesting movie. It's just a guilty pleasure of mine. I sat here and watched the whole damn thing Saturday. Just like, and singing along to the songs. Well, you have which to is, when it's which is, Well, it's scary that you you cannot see something like that for years and still remember every line of that movie. You know? So it used to scare us as a kid because there's a scene where there's a child catcher because children are illegal in this one place. So I smell children, you know, and he's going and trying to find the children. It's scary for a little kid, you know? So do you have a so holiday? Right. Right, right now you just had you know half a dozen people that their kids are in the car and they turned it off. I'm like, well, I, never will listen to that again. I smell children. Um, <laughs> now everybody's going to Google that. Chitty chitty bang bang. I smell children. Um, so do you have a, a holiday guilty pleasure like that? No, I mean, I apologize. No, Die Hard. Uh, I, I, <laughs> John, you're 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 dragging it out of me. No, I've never seen Die Hard. I know. I wanted to get that out there. Yeah, Never so I, that, it, I don't even know how that well, happens, man. <laughs> well, that, it's been on in the background here or there, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of movies and or things that if of my generation or just prior that I guess I should have seen that I haven't, and that's why we were. I was talking with friends, and that's why I actually sent you the message and said, "What's weirder, the fact that I've never seen Star Wars or the fact that I've never seen Die Hard?" And, and you said it's both. both weird, man. Both. <laughs> <laughs> but I I know people uh, that have never. Uh, Jennifer Coltrane has never seen Star Wars. You know, so I know people who have not seen Star Wars. I don't know anybody until you then has not never seen Die Hard. That was. It's just, I don't know. That's like a going-to-sleep movie. That's the movie you, you put on to go to sleep to. Anyway. Maybe, maybe I'll, as a guilty pleasure, just for you, John, pull it out and watch it, buy man. it. Maybe watch it this, you know, this, this coming week or weekend you just probably, for you. You could probably get it for free on Netflix if you look around or Prime Video or something. Uh, I'll sure. look and see. I'll see if it's out there. All right. All right. So let's um so let's talk about like moving into the new year, you know, and I think I think what's important about when you start heading into a new year and start planning is that you have to get down to and and here we go again with that word, but you have to get down to the why are you doing this? What are you yep. doing next year and why do you want to do that? All right? Mm -hmm. So um so you got Chicago coming up you've got pittsburgh coming up and now you got new york coming up way to drop the announcement and, and, <laughs> did, and, did, and did them in the reverse chronological yeah, order i have no so i would have went through the year so so you yeah so, so it's, it's pittsburgh first right nope. no chicago first mark mark nope nope new york. see i have no idea you haven't have you, put I, them, have you put them in training peaks yet I don't know. I, I I would say yes, and then try to get out there before you would. But I I, ty <laughs> I type louder than you do, so that wouldn't work out. March is the New York City half, gotcha. and I will be doing that. Uh, then May is Pittsburgh full marathon, and then I and then the announcement here uh, is yeah, I got into the Chicago marathon via the lottery, and that will be first weekend of October. Yeah, that's great. That's a good, that's a good year for you. Right. So the question is now I know your why for Pittsburgh you've talked about. Okay. It. So mm -hmm. why, why the others, why, why do you need to do New York and why do you feel the need to do Chicago? Uh, the why for New York would be it's it, a, it fits. So it's not like I'm going out of my way for the training. B, my wife and I had done it uh, the year prior together 
the year prior to that, I did it uh, and I PR'd in it in New York. I, I don't mind going to New York. Being a country guy, it's weird to say I like going to New York, but you know, I've seen all the touristy type of stuff. And now when we're there, like how we travel is I'll pick something or literally I'll put into like Siri, I'll say bike shop and I'll find one two miles away. And then we'll either go to it and then walk back or we'll walk to it and then come, you know, come back. So gotcha. we'll find some things to do. And we just, we just like to explore if you will. <laughs> so we, we kind of have a rough idea where to stay, what we want to do, et cetera. And, and it, it hits multiple facets that are important to us and no one else. My wife, it was her first half marathon and she had said, Hey, let's see if we can both get in. I don't know what would have happened if only one or if, if only she got in, I still would have insisted that we go just so she could do it. I don't know what would happen had I only got in, yeah. but so we're going to, we're going to go because we're going to train separately but she does want to run it together. So she wants me to run it with her. So the why for me, it fits. I'm doing it with her. And, um, you know, our, our little guy will turn uh, a year old while we're there. So, you know, we're going to kind of like celebrate his birthday. We're going to do stuff with the family the week before, but we're going to hang out. We're going to, you know, ce- celebrate there. Well, I like that why, because you've turned it into like a family event. And, uh, yes. you know, so, um, not to get too deep, you know, um, Nitschke said, uh, he who, he who has a why can endure any how, right. Yep. And I've always liked that saying, I wrote it down in our notes. Um, if you know why you're doing something, you'll get to it, but you have to yeah. understand your why. Um, and I think it, what it comes down to is like, is like what inspires you and what, what moves you to do something, what inspires and, and, uh, Again, not not to get too deep, but, you know, inspire comes from um, the Latin word for inspire comes means uh, basically to breathe life into. So if you do something that inspires you or you're inspired by something, it makes you feel feel more alive. Right. Right. So um, so finding that inspiration and and, and in the and in the the I guess the the opposite of that is that if you're spending your life doing something that's not inspiring it's sucking the life out of you right <laughs> you know very um, well said yes yeah I mean it, I mean that's that's when it gets down to like uh, what your life's work is you know to get out of training a little bit if your life's work it doesn't inspire you if you don't have, find any meaning in what you do for a living it's gonna suck you dry you're gonna hate it that's why people become doctors and work 100-hour weeks and still keep doing it because they've, you know, it's not always, I mean, I'm sure, like with anything, there are doctors out there that got into it solely for the money, mm-hmm. right? But the majority of doctors that I've known, personally and, and non-personally, they're doing it because they really want to help people. It inspires yeah. them. So they live for it. They they come They come home at... 10 o'clock at night and and work till three o'clock in the morning doing their notes and get right back up and go out there again. All right. Because it's, it's an inspiration. They're inspired to help people. And I I think until you find that nurses, the same way, most lawyers are the same way. (laughs) Lawyers aren't bad. Your wife's a lawyer, right? Yes. Did she do it for just for the money? Well, whenever we start making some, I'll let you know. <laughs> there you go. So obviously she <laughs> likes doing it because she's not making a lot of money at it, right? Not all lawyers make money when it comes down, you know. It, you know you're being yeah, very quiet there. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. No, we're, we're doing all right, John. But, yeah, no, yeah. a lot goes into it. But that being said, too, is, I mean, like I'll uh, say, doctors and the other professionals and so forth, she, you know, still gets calls and text messages, you know, Saturday night at you know at eight thirty or Sunday at noon, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it, well well outside of working hours, you know what I mean? And, but you know, and you know but it's, it's but kinda of like a doctor, when you you take on a job like that, there are no working hours. Your working hours right. are three sixty five, twenty four seven. And that's just how it is. Um it's 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 all about like and in, in a lower I mean it becomes a, something bigger than you are right um, right I, you can throw priests into that or 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 like Andrew pastors into that they're doing it they're not they're definitely not doing it for the money right they're doing it because right. they're part of something they believe in something bigger than themselves whether you believe in it or not they believe in that right, right. on a smaller scale we don't get paid for what we do here 
we do this podcast. I, you know, we were talking about it before the show about how much money I put out with the, every month to put the show out there. Um, Spoiler. It's yeah. it's a decent amount, and it is obviously since I put out nothing towards this, uh, it is a lot more than I do. Yeah, but but it, it's okay because you know you 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 get the feeling, and I hope it's true. You know, I've gotten reports that it is that we're helping people, that we're giving yeah. them a place, a safe place to go, you know, a safe place to listen to where people like you are. Um, people don't find. Most people do not find inspiration, and this is actually part of my, my next thing, but people don't find inspiration from the elites of the world for the most part, right? You're not going to compare yourself to Meb. You're going to compare yourself to somebody that's next to you or somebody that looks like you, you know? I won't disagree with you, but as a point of contention, I'll say is I think – you know, the little, I'll say little kids. I don't know how young to say or how old to put a cap on that though. That's where, you know, the, the Mebs and the, you know, I'll say, not that many kids know, you know, Crowy and so forth, you know, but you know, when you have these, you know, elite athletes on the cereal boxes, TV and so forth, that's what gets the, you know, them inspired at such well, a little age, a young age, because they have someone to look up to. But I think what you're saying is more in our, let's just say, post teen years onward, we're more inspired by people like us, because we feel that we can be more like them. Right. Uh, and yeah, and you're right. You know, obviously, if I looked at uh, the cereal boxes, as I was growing up, and I saw, you know, when I was a kid, you see Joe Namath, or you see Dick Buckus, you know, say, Oh, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. I'd like to play football. So you end up playing football, you know, things like that. So it's going to inspire you to that. I think we're kind of jumping ahead, but I think where you go wrong is that you become so focused on being Dick Buckus. And then when you can't be that, because there's only a few dip buckuses in the world, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, when you can't be that, it almost it almost demotivates you. Yeah. You, know, you have to you have to strive to be. We've talked about it before. The uh, the the guy that I used to see uh, race a triathlon that was bigger than me. Yeah. You know, um, it was it was like okay, here's somebody that's my size and in bigger and doing better than me. Here's something that I can strive for. I can focus on that instead of focusing on the guy that is doing, you know, 40 minute sprint triathlons, you know, I'm focused on a guy that's getting under two hours, you know, and things yeah. like that. So, um, I think, I think that's the, like the first step is to find, you know, what makes you come alive, what inspires you. The next thing is like, trying to find out what your inner strengths are you know very rarely do do you and, and by by your innate i mean my like your innate strengths like very rarely do you strive to do something you don't like to do right right Nobody so it, <laughs> right so when you say that somebody's in their element like uh i'm going to quote a quote another person sir ken robinson in the elements that our element is the point at which natural talent and skill meet personal passion Mm -hmm. Right. So you're passionate about something that you actually have a skill in. So that's meaning that's in your uh, that's that's when you say someone's in their element or, or that's in their wheelhouse. You know, we, we talk like that because that's something that you love doing um, and you're good at it or, or you could be really good at this. Um, like talk about professionally. I was always I, I flunked math in high school. I sucked at it. Now, for some reason in the military, I found this ability to like look at statistics and it makes sense to me. So that's in my, I'm in my element when I'm doing data. I'm in my, it's in my wheelhouse to do that kind of stuff. It's something I'm good at and I like doing, you know, right? So you're in your element. Gotcha. So that, I mean, that's what you have to do is you have to find something that, um, Another quotation, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. Then go do that because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Right. And that's by a person. Howard Thurman said that we need more. We need more passion, not people that are just robot robots that are just doing the job because that's what pays them the money. You know, right. the, world, the world needs people that are passionate about what they do. Um, the people that, you know. 
I think most people get into politics because they have a passion to help somebody, no matter what side of the fence you're on, no matter what wing you're on, right? Yeah. You get into that because you want to help people. The majority of people do, not some people lately, but they want to help people. So I've always had this this thing, and I've, I've gotten arguments about it, is that even if I don't agree with them, if they've given 30 or 40 years of their life to being in the Senate or being in Congress, I respect that because they're trying to do something. Not, they're not in it for the majority of – for themselves for the most part. They're trying to help people whether you agree with it or not, right? In their head, they're trying to help. So you have to have a little bit of respect for that, right? I, I, that's just my view on it. Uh, being younger, I will say some, not all. And, mm-hmm. and 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 just my take, and, and I'm not, once again, John, I agree with you on most things. I just I don't. I'm not saying I don't trust career politicians. I feel that after, like, I don't disagree with what you're saying. That some of them get into it and really, really want to help. If for these, I'm going to go back to a fictional reference. This would be the Leslie Nopes. If you've watched Parks and Rec, you know yep, they really exactly. want to dig in. You know that there are some people that they're they're in it for the public service. I think there's obviously some that are definitely in it for self serving reasons. The people that come out of office having more money in the bank than they went into it, you know, obviously are self-serving. And there are some that once they're in it for so long, they're, they're out of touch with reality. And that can go into almost any realm of anything, not just public servants. You know I mean? The, the fitness trainers who, who had never been fat, and you know, or then thirty years later, still telling people this is exactly what you need to do. You know what I mean? And it, they may have, they may have out of date information. They may, you know, they've never been there. You know what I mean? And, it, and occasionally, I think you need to readjust, realign, and get back in, get your pulse, you know, get your finger on the pulse of what's going on with stuff. Yeah, I think that, that goes back to like one of the uh, one of the moments in uh, Iron Man Year One or Backup Pack Endurance that made Andrew cringe when we had, I don't know if you remember that show, when we had Ben Greenfield on. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, all the biohacking stuff, yeah. And, 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 and the ben, question, and the question I asked him at the end. Yeah. You remember the question I asked him at yeah, the end of it? Have you ever been, have you ever been overweight? Ben, no. Have you ever been overweight? <laughs> he goes, he yeah. says, no, I've never been overweight. I said, you really don't know what it's like then, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can sit here and spout all this stuff and, 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 and do your theories, but you've never been out there trying to do an Ironman at 270 pounds. Yeah. You don't – not to say there's – not to say what he's saying is always wrong – but until you feel that, you can't tell me what that feels like. We know what that feels right. like. We yes. know we know how hard it is to push a bike up a 15% incline when you weigh 250. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying anything like that. But, you know, there, there's, some, there's some value to be, having been there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so – um, and then, um, you know, look at where you where you add the greatest value, you know, doing work you're good at, but uh, the work you loathe is not a pathway to fulfillment. Right. So you still, you know, you might be good at something, but doesn't mean you like it. I, I mean, I'll use True. I'll use what I do for a living right now. I, I'm good at data. I like doing data. I hate where I work. <laughs> You know, but, yep. you know, so it's like, um, yeah, if anybody's listening now, it doesn't matter. Um, come up in your EPR, John. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I think uh, it's like too often you undervalue your own strengths and skills at the at the expense of something that's easy. Right. Because it's scary, you know, I, and I, I can tell you I'm there now. It's like, you know, you're 54 years old. You don't like what you're doing, but to leave now and if anybody knows you know I work a, a government job to leave now means you lose that retirement you lose a lot of benefits it's scary so yeah. what do you do it's like you, you're, you're almost uh, I say you but I mean me in this case you know you're, you're kind of selling out for the comfort of what might be 15 years down the road assuming you're going to be alive 15 years down the road yeah. You know, you know, you make that assumption. Uh, what was it? Uh, not to bring up a bad name, but I'll I'll bring it up. 
because obviously this is not a good guy, uh, Joe Paterno. You know, he Penn State coach for 50-plus years, right? Retires, mm-hmm. retires, kind of made to retire, but retires and is dead two weeks later. Yeah. You know, so so what are you working for retirement that you may never reach? So it's important to find something you like to do and kind of focus on that. You know, um, it's just, and it comes down to how will you measure your life? You know, what that old saying at the end of the day, do you want it on your tombstone that, yeah, he worked 50 hours a week. That's what you want on your, that's what you want to be remembered for? Uh, probably not, right? You want to Most be remembered people know. As, yeah, you want to be remembered as a good person, as someone who gave back, someone who was a good father, a good husband, good boyfriend, good girlfriend, whatever, good mother. You know, that's what you want to be. Those are the important things, right? Or, or you've made an impact in someone's life. Um, I will say, like, the whole episode... You, you did those interviews without my input for, for episode 100. So the first time I was hearing them was, was a lot of them was after we published it. Yeah. And it, it kind of, you know, it, it makes you feel good to hear kind of some of that. So especially Megan Nana Sinkham saying, you know, that, that you inspire somebody like that. Because I look at her as, you know, I've told you, she's one of my favorite people. And to hear her say, John inspires me. It's like, wow, you know, I never even realized that. So, and I've gotten it from other people too. And I, I think that's what, why we do shows like this. I think if we were out here talking and we didn't feel like we were helping anybody, we wouldn't be doing this long. You know, you, you want to feel like you're doing something, right? Right. Right. I, I'm, well, I'm thinking like six different things, sorry. And I'll just take <laughs> 30, I'm just going to take 30 seconds. Uh, points of clarification, like these are things in Rob's head that like four weeks from now I'll still be thinking about if I don't get them out. Paterno, I'm obviously up here in the heart of Penn State country and I'm a Penn State graduate, okay? And, and, and that's a man where go back to four months before any, and I'm going to go with allegations came out, okay? He gave back tremendously in the community and to a lot of philanthropic things. Now, the, you could argue and say, what all came out with findings? Was he in? Was he isn't? And there's a lot of speculation on, well, he had to have known because of blank, okay? Put all that aside. You know, once again, though, he's, you know, what put aside whether you're, you're in it, you're not in it, whatever – him and his wife did donate heavily, you know, into many philanthropies and did a lot, you know, while they were here. And going back to that passion as well of, you know, he wanted to be, a, you know, basically a great football coach. And he was, you mean, had a ton of wins and, you know, an institution here in this area for a very, very long time. So, but once again, not just, not at the sake of, um, I don't want to sound because you can counterpoint it. Not at the sake of ruining lives. Like if you watch some of these like TV shows and movies and whatever, some of the coaches that do all the dirty stuff to win. You know what I mean? He was a good, you know, coach touching and helping uh, kids' lives. You know what I mean? And running a good quality program. When he, when you know what I mean? It's a, it is a very shameful end to a very you know great. Uh, career should say it that way. Okay, go skipping over to the next thing though. You were just saying about us being here and you know touching people and going through it. I think you and I we talk here. We try to have good episodes and 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 t- you know talk about relevant things, things in our life and other stuff. And like you said, it's kind of about having a a, pas- a purpose. And I, and it's funny because I've only watched a few episodes of South Park in my life. You know, and they're funny. I I give them give them that. You know, but it's I I, I didn't get it. I should say. Like when I was in high school and when the movie came out and, you know what I mean? The first one or whatever, the only one, maybe, I don't know. And I said to somebody, I said, I just, I watched it. I just don't get it. I don't see why people think it's funny. And they said, well, what's not to get? I'm like, well, I don't understand why they think it's, this stuff is funny. You know, they, they, they go from this to this, to this, they're all over the place. They're like, yeah, they're just trying to piss off as many people as possible. And I'm like, oh, well, if you look at it through that lens, then I can clearly see why people think it's funny. You right. know what I mean? Everybody, and, and, everybody's fair game on that show, which is why I have always been, I have been a South Park fan since season one and you were yeah. obviously way too young for that at that point. But um, yeah. what I love always liked about South Park is that they will go after everybody Yeah, and they will do it directly 
they will do it in a way like uh, I'm thinking of one episode where where um, something happened and Tom Cruise was hiding at, at one of their houses and they were trying to get Tom Cruise to come out of the closet. Mm-hmm. That's that's hilarious to me because that was I, that was what's going on at that time. That's I'm hilarious. sure. Like I said, in the episodes I've seen recently, I, when, once you've uh, – I'm not even saying they're new episodes, but the ones I've seen – I get it. I, I'm not saying that I would have anything against watching it. But once once you look at it through that view, but you know, this is, and I'm coming back just to when I say put a positive spin on what you and I try to do here is we're trying to put out good content. We're not here just complaining or putting down on stuff. You know, what I mean, we're trying to build up. And you said it earlier, which made me giggle in my head because you had said it's a safe place. And it makes me want to make the joke about all the college kids needing the safe place, you know, safe havens and all that stuff now. You know what I mean? But yeah, we're trying to create a positive environment with, you know, words of encouragement and like, hey, we were here and help out. And, you know, and that's why we continue to do it because it's not like our goal or mission was just to find the flaws or faults in something. Right, exactly. So we can go into um, from that. I mean, when you're going through training, and I think we kind of touched on it already, is the the whole issue of uh, social comparison, the social comparison theory, and a social comparison trap, um, which I think social media these days. I said something online the other day about that. I said. Uh, uh, about Facebook and and kind of got not the response I thought I was going to get, <laughs> you know. I, I I said Facebook is has extended your teenage years. It's extended high school because mm-hmm. where you had all and there's mean people throughout your whole life. You know that's beside mm-hmm. the point. But when you leave high school, you don't have to f- hear those things anymore. You can kind of segregate yourself. But if you're on Facebook, you're still seeing it now. It's an extended adolescence. And, and not that it wasn't there before. It probably was. But, you know, when you start, but it's human nature. It's, it's a human, it's a core element of human nature to socially compare yourself to other people. It's, it's been around forever. Well, that's been, uh, yeah, there, I mean, it's a, that old keeping up with the Joneses. You know what I mean? It, they right. go f- go back years and or decades with it you know what i mean even back to like the 50s the neighbors got a car we got a car the neighbors had got a television we got a tell you know what i mean way back you know what i mean it was simpler things like that but now taking it the uh, you know another step down the line facebook and i've said this before you know what i had heard somebody call it you know facebook's the world's biggest brag corner everybody wants you know no some people forgive me there are people out there that are just woe is me uh, life is horrible fml you know um you know they want people to you know nothing bothers me more than when somebody puts on you see it i'm having this horrible day life is tragic and then somebody's like oh my gosh what's wrong well, i don't want to talk about it what well, you did you put yeah, it out you there did. so you, you want you want the attention you know right. uh yeah but you know 99 of the people out there are only posting the best of the best and look at my new car and look at this and you know instantly it's you know it just showing off you know what i mean and, and that's not me necessarily so I don't think it's most of us really. I mean, I think people take uh, people like me and a lot of us posting our our races and our trainings and stuff as bragging. But mm-hmm. I don't think – I never saw it as that, even when other people do it. Like someone can look at someone like Christine Cox who posts every day that she's running 10 miles. I don't look at that as bragging. I look at that as someone who's trying to – help other people saying, look, you know, this is, we're out here doing it. Everybody's out here doing it. Um, you can do it too. And Christine is one of those people that if you want to go run with her, she'll run with you. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't look at, and because I know Christine personally, I know she's not the bragging type. So I know she doesn't mean it like that, but I think people, there's like this negativity sometimes that people see those things. They automatically think the most negative thing about that person. Right. Um, and I and he's not a negative person, so I don't want him to assume like it, like it is. But uh, Andrew made a comment. Andrew, the other day or maybe yesterday, made a comment about Facebook Live, about how much he hates it because it's just another way of saying "look at me." I don't, and I think people do do use it for that. But I think there's a place for Facebook Live. We've talked about using it ourselves. 
Yeah. You know, I don't automatically think the most negative thing about somebody because they go on Facebook Live. Um, I think I think there are people out there that do use it for negative things. There's plenty of negative people on Facebook, you know. But I think for the most part, people just want to share their lives and sh- and people um, like I, well, I you know, like let's look at that. It's like uh, people that post stuff about their kids. You know, you could say that's bragging too. Look how great my kids are. You know, your their kids are a pain in the ass, just like every other kid is. But you never see that. Not mine. He's perfect. <laughs> well, but he's a year. <laughs> Give him ten years. I guarantee you he's going to be a pain in the ass. Um, all kids are pains in the ass. So, but you never see that posted. You never. Well, you, some people do, <laughs> but for the most part, everybody's kid's perfect. Everybody kid. Everybody's kid is is a genius, right? Everybody's kid's the most talented kid in the world. We all know that's not true. So I don't think it's bragging when they put that stuff out there. They're sharing with their family. They're sharing, you know, it's helping. It's this, It's a self-esteem thing, you know, and I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, um, I think about when you when you compare, I think where you can get in kind of some trouble is that if you, you should always aim high, right? You should always aim like you say, you want to be, you want to compete in Kona one year, one day. But if you make that your sole goal, um, it's going to be a problem because one, you may not have the ability to get to Kona, and then so that means if you don't get to Kona in ten years, you're a failure in your head, right? Um, I think the trick is is that and there's there's some lists at the end that I'll go through but one of the tricks is is that you want to aim high you want to aim to go up the ladder but only a couple of rungs at a time you know you want to say okay you you can't say um I just started I just started running I, I ran a mile today I'm going to run a marathon next month that's not realistic it's it's not a smart goal right it's unrealistic uh, uh- I'm going to jump in, though, and I'm not disagreeing with you, just okay. counterpointing. Okay, you disagree, man. And, and that is – I'm going to use the staircase because and, – and I don't know the original originator of the, the quote, and that is you don't, you don't have to see the staircase to take the first couple steps. Right. You, know, you don't have to see the entire thing. You, know, you don't need to see your way to the top. And you know, you, I'm going to I'll get back to the Kona thing, but I use the marathon. You, your statement was incorrect until the last part of it, where you had said, "Hey, you just because you know you, you ran a mile, a mile today doesn't mean you you can run a marathon." And then there was a little bit of a second, and then you said, "Next month." That's right, you know, because that's a then getting into the whole just the straight up training of it. You don't want to increase by more than ten percent, and blah 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 blah, and you're going to hurt yourself. Okay, are there right. people that go from nothing to a marathon in a month? Yes. That's the exception, not the rule. Okay, but that being said, is when I was started training for my first marathon, I had never ran more than three miles, and that was multiple years prior. The day one of my marathon training plan, I picked one of those training plans that was a 16 week with another 10 weeks prior to get from walking to running three miles, and then the 16 week started with three four mile runs to build up to the marathon. You know, so once again, it's that whole old saying of, you know, a journey of a thousand steps you know, starts with, you know, a single one. You know, you have to start. You have to start in order to, you know, get going. You don't have to be perfect to start. You just have to start, you know, and that that's the same deal, deal though is – and it comes down to what you're – and it goes back to the real deep reasons and the real deep whys, I'll say. You know, Kona. You said if if you set Kona as your only goal. John, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're – if you are – and I'm going to just go to the extreme. Young, very in shape. You have a fitness background. You have the means to have a, a coach, a trainer or to go professional and that's what you're shooting for if that's your goal in life. But if you're a, you know, use me, 35 or 34 year old, you know, insurance guy from, you know, central Pennsylvania, you know, that makes it much harder. Then you throw throw the added I'm not saying stress is in a bad way, but, you know, hey, you know, I got the wife, I, you know, I have the, the, the child, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of things going on in life. Qualifying for Kona may not, might not be at the top of a realistic list of goals. 
for me. You know what I mean? Um, and maybe and that being said, hey, I'd like to, you know, go to Boston one year of qualify. But once that, that once again, knowing your limitations, I'm, you know, uh, at my best marathon was a 402. And I would need to do – I'd knock, need to knock about 25 percent off my time. I need to be just above a three hours. I have to cut a full hour off the marathon. That ain't, probably ain't going to happen at weighing over 200 pounds, you know? So right. step one, and that, that realigns other more realistic goals for life, and that helps put things in, sh- in perspective. I need to lose some weight. I need to get – when I say a big running base, I need to get years of consistent running under my belt and then years of speed work under my belt. And honestly, I need my belt to go down a few sizes before you know I'm going to – before you know, and, and then I'm – you know, that time – the the time will become more gracious you know instead of a 302 i I'll, I'll be able to you know and maybe in my 40s it'll be a you know a th- what a 310 or a 315 now it might be doable you know but once again you have to know what your limitations are based on what your real goals in life because if i wanted to boston qualify i wanted to kona kona qualify you know, there's nothing to hold me back other than all the other things in life that I actually really like to do, like yeah, go right. home, go home, see my wife and child. <laughs> oh, you like to do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. You're so young. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, want to let me qualify what I said before when I said that. Um, yeah. In a month. Um, what my point is, is that. If you're just getting started, why don't you shoot for a 5K first? And then once you've got that down, then shoot for the 10K. You know, mm-hmm. baby steps. Um, yeah. yeah. I think if you only have the, the like like you said, the top of the stair goal and you don't have any goals in between there to get you to that goal, I think mm-hmm. that's that works against you. Uh, I agree. I, um, and I, I thought it found, I found a study, and I don't know how this is going to go over, but I found the study is that although men do make upward comparisons, research finds that more women make upward comparisons and are comparing themselves with unrealistically high standards presented in the media, more so than men do. And I'm no, I don't know if that's true. So, uh, so that it'll be interesting to get a a, a female perspective on that. I mean, the females that I know don't. I think they're very grounded. Um, but I do know, well, let's, let's talk about like, you know, the reason that those, the, what we were talking about before, like shows like real housewives and, and things like that, men don't watch those shows. They're on for a reason, <laughs> you know, yeah. most, most men don't watch the real housewives or the bachelor, you know? So, um, they're, they're, these are these, these standards that are just, you know, you, you, you wish, you know, it, it's part of it, I guess. But I, I found that a good, uh, interesting take that uh, men, men, however, do not fixate for the most part on the elites in the world, the Mebs or the Mark Allens. We fixate on more people like us. We look at, like I was doing at the Chris River guy. I'm not looking at the guy who won the race. I'm looking at this guy that looks like me. And I'm getting yeah. irritated that he can beat me. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's my goal. I, I could care less about the 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 140-pound uh, guy that just won the race I, I i know i can't do that yeah so I'm, I'm i'm more likely to fixate on the one i can do something about and i have seen women i've known that i've raced with i have seen them do that focus on the person that won the race and not the person in their age group yeah you know or something like that so um i, I, I got a bunch of weird thing thoughts in life i should say and one of them and this is off topic but i'll come back to it you know, I think uh, maybe as men or as a society, I think we have a, a prevalence towards violence. And I say that meaning like we watch football. We watch, you know what I mean, car wrecks, et cetera, whatever, you know what I mean? And I think it comes from like an, a, a, just basically life has always been we have to go out and hunt and kill something or we have to run so we don't you – know, we're not being killed. You know what I mean? And as we right. get into more more indoor jobs and more domesticated, I think that's why, you know, we watch boxing and MMA and et cetera. You know what I mean? And it gets, you know, men, maybe more than women, fired up because I, I just think it's part of a deeper genetic thing. But where I'm going with that here is nothing scientific, no studies here. This is just Rob's thought on it. You know, I, I think, you know, but you want to admit it or not, John – you're a former Navy guy, so maybe you have, but would admit it. 
at some point in your life, you walked into a room, sized up the comp, the air quotes competition and thought I could take him, you know? Oh, and I think that, course, I yeah. think, yeah, that's, I think yeah. that's what coming down to what you're saying right here is, you know, a lot of us are going to look at, you know, you know, uh, you know, Mike Tyson or Vander Holyfield and say, nope, nope, he'd crush me. You know, there's going to be a certain amount of guys like, oh, I could go a couple rounds with him. You know, you know, you can't though. Right. But yeah. overall. You walk into a room, you're sizing up – I'm just going to say instinctively, you're sizing up the competition. I think that plays a deeper part too in in our genetic makeup whenever we're out racing or just running or even anything. You know what I mean? Like you said, um, you know, with that. I mean it, it, it always happens as well when you're out in a race or even just on a training run. You know what I mean? Somebody, you know – about your age or size comes up next to you, you're going to run a little faster to try to keep up with them. But if they're 15 years, you're, you're, you know, younger than you and, and the 40, 80 pounds less than you, you might try it for a few steps and eventually you just rationalize with, ah, nope, they're on their own thing. I'm just going to let them go. Yeah. And that's actually part of the uh, social comparison theory is that if some, it's our rational thought, if somewhere we're out there for a jog and a, and a guy comes running up behind us and passes us, our first thought is, wow, they're in better shape. I can keep up with them. And then, but then your, your, your other part of your brain kicks in and say, well, no, they're 20. I'm 54. I also have arthritis. Also, <laughs> you know, you kind of start rationalizing it away. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, so to end this part, um, there's like some steps to comparison. One is to seek connection, not comparison. How are people you strive to be more like actually like you? What are your similarities? Are there things they have done in their life that you connect with? Right. So if I'm out there and I see a heavy guy who is a cancer survivor, I say, oh, I connect with that guy. So this is someone who, who might be a little better than me that I may, then I could strive to be to meet that. You know, I, I can't meet Meb, you know, <laughs> yeah. at this point at least, right? Uh, two is to look up. Well, we were just talking about look up, but just a little. Two rungs up the ladder is a smart goal. While the very top can be unrealistic and demotivating in the long run, reach for things that are attainable first, then reach again. If you can barely finish a 5K, a marathon is out of reach anytime soon. So instead, reach for the 10K or the sub-30, then reach for the half marathon. Uh, Number three, count your blessings. Don't discount the good things, even the relatively small accomplishments uh, you have already. A year ago, you may have not have been able to run a mile, but now you can. Now you can. Five years ago, you might have been over 300 pounds. Now you're 250. Uh, instead of focusing on the fact that you've been at 250 for a year, focus on where you've come from. Now, Megan um, Fanning is uh, it gets on me about that all the time, and I had to look at. I have a race coming up in a few weeks. Uh, the Croom Zoom, which I did in January of of seventeen, yeah. um, uh, I looked at that, and I was talking to Nancy about it. And I was looked at that, and I went back and looked at my notes and stuff. And I was slow, and I think it was like an eighteen fifty pace for over twenty five k. I was two hundred and seventy two pounds in that race. I'm two fifty three now. Yeah. So I didn't even realize that, that I'm 20 pounds lighter than I was a year ago. Congratulations on even, that, and John. I, and I didn't even realize it, though. I'm looking at – I'm all bummed out because I'm 252, but I, a, a year ago I was heavier. Yeah. So I have made progress. Um, a year ago I was struggling with my foot. I'm not struggling with this anymore. There have been accomplishments over the year, and you need to remember those things as you go forward. Right. Count right. your blessings. And then number four is what we, everybody always says. Compare yourself only to yourself. A happy yes. runner compares themselves to their last run, not to others who were faster. Right. So when I go into Croom Zoom, the 25K in Jan- January 6th, I'm looking at what I did last year. I'm looking at I did an 1853 minute pace per mile. If I come in at a 1730 this year, I'm faster. I've victory. Uh, that's a victory for me. Doesn't matter that someone else is running it at eleven pace <laughs> over twenty. It right. has no bearing on on me. Right. It's a victory Correct. for me. So um, even and and I will even say this: even if I came in at the same exact pace, but I can walk the next day, that's a victory. Because I remember yeah. after that race last year, I was down for three or four days. I could barely move. Right. Um, I feel like I, I know I am in better shape now. I know I can go out there and do that 25K at 1853 a mile 
and and be fine the next day as I am right now. So that's a victory. And I think we have to maintain that thought process. And I think it's hard for some of us, me included, uh, like the reality check, right? Yes. Um, You can't compare yourself to other people if they're not in the same position you are. Now, if someone is exactly like me, 252 pounds, 253, and they go out there and they've had the exact same training and the exact same health issues I've had, and they go out there and run 17 and I run an 18, then maybe I can compare myself to them. But nobody's been through your journey, right? Right. Um, and we, t- we talk about that a lot too. It's like you don't know someone's story by looking at them. No. You know, we, we know people within the group that look like, that look like, they're, they could run fine that are running 13 minute miles. Yeah. Not much faster than me, but they're lighter than I am. But I don't know what their story is. I don't know if they've got knee issues or hip issues or, or anything, you know, so you can't compare, you can't just assume things by looking at somebody. Right. Right. So just never assume things anyways, but let alone that whole but judge book lights cover thing. Right. But you know what? It's human nature to do it. We all do it. You know? Right. So, I mean, to say that you never judge anybody, you you know, you're just fooling yourself. Of course you do. You may not no. do it out, out loud, but you're going to. Y'all do. <laughs> it's just a matter of then trying to take the um, effort to uh, analyze it. Maybe you know, you're going to ha- most likely have some sort of snap judgment, but it's being, I guess, want to say smart enough or, or intelligent enough to sit back then and really analyze it a little bit and know how much of it to dismiss. Yeah, and I think uh, the the people I've been around like for the past five, six years have been surprised with that about me is that I might do something stupid but and they feel like as a guy that I just do something stupid and I don't think about it ever again, I dwell on things forever. If I do yeah. something wrong, <laughs> I am constantly trying to figure out what the hell was I thinking? Why did I do that? Yeah. I, I do it all the time. I do it probably to a fault. Mm-hmm. Because it, it sticks in my craw for a long time, especially if I, if, especially if I'm wrong, you know. Because I, I'm trying to figure out what was I thinking, you know. Why did I do that? Yeah. So, um, you know, that's what it is. So, uh, we are at a little over an hour now. So, uh, is there anything we want to end with? I have nothing else to add at this point. <laughs> so uh, I will add, I guess, or say um, that I'm not sure if you and I will be recording next week because next week will be Christmas, the day we, we normally record on Mondays. That'll be Christmas. So if we do get together, we will record. If we don't get together, um, then I guess I, to agree with me saying, I had sat down and talked with uh, Sean Meehan, uh, and that's a cohort of Megan's Colin. Collins Fanning, and uh, we had talked about the Appalachian Trail, um, not the Appalachian Trail, I apologize, the Laurel Highlands Ultra, which is on the Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail, which you and I discussed back on episode 85. So um, I have about an hour-long interview with him that I think we can release uh, that day. If So we have yeah. a show. It'll be something new and, and interesting, and if people in the meantime want to go back and listen to uh, my you know epic adventures with my family on the trail, you can get a refresher, and then we can, can listen to that as well. That was like uh, episode 85, I believe, right? Yes. If you're going Something through the titles, it. it's not – it's it's the, the title. It's the flat line to finish. Um, we started talking about the documentaries and then went into uh, that one, yeah. went into gotcha. hiking. So either way, there's going to be a show next week. I think we probably will be posting the Sean Mien interview just mm-hmm. because we want Rob to be married You know, a month from now. Um, <laughs> to ask him to record on Christmas Day might be a little much. A little so, bit. Uh, a little bit much. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to assume that we're going to – if not, then we'll post – we'll record maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, probably Wednesday. Um, but uh, if not, there will be a show next week. So, yes. So um, keep, keep it up. Uh, you guys are doing great with uh, getting people into the group again. Uh, try to get the podcast out there to people. Share in the groups that you're in. 
on Facebook, uh, Twitter, whatever you want to do. Uh, we're still looking for people that might be able to help us with the social media side of it a little bit. But I do appreciate you guys uh, trying to grow the group and everything like that going into next year. We have some goals for next year, and uh, we're, we really appreciate you guys uh, trying to help us out with that. Yep. If you have a Let's chance go. and haven't, somebody go out and leave us a, a, a review. I went out and was looking at the reviews of the show, and they were all very nice, although they all seem a little bit older. We need to get some yeah. some newer reviews in there to hopefully, uh, hopefully get us back up in there in the rankings and uh, for other people to see us. Yeah, we are going to be a featured podcast again in April on Podbean. Uh, they contacted me a couple weeks ago so oh, that, that really blew us that blew us up and um the last time we were so we're kind of hoping that it'll happen again um so uh for next week rob merry christmas to you and your family merry christmas to everybody out there and uh, you as well hope, sir hope you, hope you have a great holidays uh whatever it is you uh you celebrate and uh we will talk to you uh, if not next week, we will be back the week after, which is New Year's, so we'll probably be doing it January 2nd. Yep. And we'll, and we'll talk so, about all the, all the nasty things we ate. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Talk to you then. Hey, talk to you later. Thanks for listening to the Endurance for Everyone podcast. If you have comments or questions for the show, send an email to teame4e at enduranceforeveryone.com. And remember, swim calm, bike strong, and run steady.